Good morning, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are YouTube. So we're just about ready to get the ZZR, or ZX11 if you're in the States, back on the dyno to break in the new race engine, but we want to make a couple of small changes to the exhaust. One of the problems that many racers have, myself and my friend Ian included, is melted boots, and that's because the very short exhausts on race bikes deposit the gas right on your toes when you're on the start line, you're kind of crouching out, ready to go. So we want to extend the exhaust pipe back slightly, and move the gases out of harm's way, but also we want to be able to add a wideband O2 sensor, so we've got to rework the exhaust a little bit to do it. We've been using a fairly standard exhaust from last year, just without an end can. Uh, we're still going to use the headers of that, but we're going to add an intermediate pipe and a turnout tip. So we're just going to go through how we make the tip and the pipe, how we're going to make it work, and the basics involved with welding stainless steel, and the differences between the types of welding. There are four main types of welding typically used commercially, gas, arc, MIG and TIC. Gas and arc welding we can kind of discount because they're not used anywhere really in the automotive world in any serious way, MIG and TIG being the two main types. Now just here I've got two different types of welder, top one of course is a TIG welder, the bottom one is MIG welder, and the differences to keep it nice and simple are as follows. With a TIG welder you've got a tungsten inert gas, that's what TIG stands for, this here is the tungsten tip, and the inert gas, in this case pure argon, flows up around the torch and shields the weld from oxidisation as you're welding. The other type, MIG, is metal inert gas. And what that gives us, as you can see here, the torch has this time a wire protruding. That's the metal, and that's just a steel wire. And the inert gas on this one is CO2. So that gives us the choice then of MIG for larger things like box sections and for chassis and bodywork and things like that or TIG for the most precise work. Working on exhaust, we can be dealing with very thin wall tubing. This walling here is very, very thin. So we're going to be using TIG. It also allows us a very neat, small weld. So the next thing we've got to do is create a tip. So I've got a pre-bend here. These are available off places like eBay, and they are only a matter of 10 pounds or so. I want to turn this into a turnout tip. We ran something very similar with the old exhaust. Now this one obviously flares up, which is why this is a larger diameter, and also why we can't reuse it. But all these are, it's a 45 degree bend, or in this instance, yeah, 45 degree bend, it's the same. And we created a band and slash cut it. So with nothing more than an angle grinder, our 10 pound bend, the TIG welder, will be able to make the exhaust tip that takes any gases and should anything go wrong with the engine, any fluids away from the back tyre. So it's, although it seems like a cosmetic item, it is really important. So the pipe's been catching on this bolt under here. It's not quite a straight line where it needs to go. So what we've had to do is just put a small cut in the pipe, bend it across, you can just see there's a bend on it, and TIG weld it in place. This now allows us to join the pipe here and bring it out away from the mount that it's fouling. All we now have now to do is put a tip on the end to turn it out so it's away from our feet and away from the back tyre. So there you go, that's the basics of how we've made our exhaust. 
All we've got to do now is refit the radiator, fill it up with fluids, and then it's time to hit the dyno and brake in the new engine ready for the race season coming up. If you like these videos, hit the like and subscribe button. Please do leave a comment, and we'll see you soon.